The Wisconsin Badgers have been up and down this season. Last weekend in South Bend on Friday night, the Badgers played top-ranked Notre Dame, played well but lost 4-2. Then on Sunday at the United Center in Chicago behind the goaltending of Jack Berry, the Badgers snapped the Fighting Irish 16-game winning streak and won 5-zip. Now Penn State's in Madison to take on the Badgers this weekend. I'm Brian Posick, the radio voice of Wisconsin hockey, and associate head coach Mark Siki joins me next on the Badger Hockey Digest. This is Lexi Rush. She's 10 and she's amazing. You see, Lexi was born deaf and couldn't hear anything. That was until her doctor in Appleton referred her to the pediatric specialists at UW Health in Madison. Now, two operations later, Lexi can hear everything. Powerful minds, compassionate care, amazing results. UW Health, remarkable. New Year's resolution, Sue? I'm getting the whole house organized. And the sales saved me hundreds. You? Started with the garage. <laughs> but these are gonna be great. Yeah. Visit your GMC dealer and get something you really want. Get 18% below MSRP on the most popular remaining 2017 GMC Acadia models. That's over $9,100 below MSRP on a GMC Acadia Denali. We are professional grade GMC. Well, this past Sunday morning, former Badger Jim Johansson passed away at the age of 53. It stunned everybody. He was getting ready to serve as general manager for USA Hockey at the Winter Olympics in South Korea. Of course, Tony Granato and Chris Chelios are on that coaching staff. And Mark Osiki uh, with us here, Badger's associate head coach. I know it stunned you as well. Uh, it, it was a, a trying time for, for all the coaches and everybody that's affiliated with Wisconsin hockey. But you had a game to play that day at the United Center in Chicago against top-ranked Notre Dame, and there was a message that you sent to the boys prior to, and boy, uh, they went out and played their hearts out, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing that we wanted the guys to understand is what J.J. stood for, and uh, it was Badger Nation, and we have to st stand up for one of our guys that fell, and um, it was a hard, I think it was really hard for us as a staff to go through. Uh, obviously, Tony was a teammate of his and uh, played in the Olympics with him and uh, crossed paths on a lot of international events with him. And uh, same thing for me. I, I did about 10 or 11 different events with JJ. And uh, obviously, that hit very close to the heart. And we wanted our guys to understand how we felt about it and what JJ meant not only to Badger hockey, but to the hockey world. And um, you see the outpouring that's going on that's out there right now for him and uh, what he truly meant to the hockey world. Uh, he, there wasn't a nicer person in the, in the hockey business. And uh, he, he truly gave his shirt off his back for anybody and for any kid. He um, spent a lot of time doing whatever he could to help any hockey player grow. Yeah. Our thoughts and prayers to his wife, uh, Abigail, and their daughter, Ellie, and his entire family. Um, and your team, though, came out and responded extremely well. Uh, you beat the top-ranked team in the country, which had won 16 games in a row. You actually played well Friday night in South Bend, played even better on Sunday, and it was backstopped by Jack Berry, who made 40 saves. He was really, really good one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was uh, – Jack was uh, very calm in net, and I think as a result, our bench was calm. Um, was there about four minutes left or so in the first period on the breakaway where he, mm -hmm. he stopped not only one, then there's a rebound that actually went off of one of our players back into him. And no problem. He was very calm with it, and I think that set the tone for the rest of the game. Yep. First goal was scored by Wyatt Kalnick, a 200-foot dash end-to-end, -end, coast to coast. I mean, that was a thing of beauty. And we've seen this young man. He's got 20 points now this season. He's one of the top-scoring freshmen in the Big Ten, among the top-scoring freshmen defensively in all of college hockey. And boy, he's he can really get up and go. That was fun to watch he, he's a tremendous talent I, I we can't say that us as coaches taught any of that what he did there on that play <laughs> but uh, the one thing he did do he did a great job using the net to protect himself and uh, in, in terms of the retrieval and um, he did a great job with it and then he had great patience going down the ice but what a great kid I mean he takes it all in works hard Jim Jim Snyder our strength coach 
says he just wants more and more. So good things are going to be uh, in front of him. He's going to have a really bright future. And usually successful hockey teams have good goaltending and good special teams. You had three special teams goals on Sunday against Notre Dame. Boy, you'd like, like to keep that going at some point. Well, I mean, as you move towards the end of the year, that's the key. Uh, your special teams are unbelievably big. You have to be good on the penalty kill. You're going to give up chances. You're going to give up goals here and there on the penalty kill. Uh, your goaltender has to be outstanding. But on the power play, you have to keep on finding a way to improve and, and generate momentum. A lot of times you're not going to score, um, but you've got to generate momentum. And I thought our power play did a tremendous job on Sunday afternoon uh, generating looks at the net. Uh, obviously, we scored some goals, but it, it generated a lot of momentum. Um, and, and as you move towards the end of the year, those two things are key. Obviously, goaltender is probably the third most important part and aspect toward, as you more, move towards the end of the year. Sure. Among the uh, power play goals scored on Sunday, Seamus Malone, who grew up in nearby Naperville, Illinois, got to play at the United Center for the first time. And we'll take two minutes now with Seamus Malone. Well, Seamus, I know you had a lot of friends and family members uh, go to the United Center in Chicago on Sunday. I'm not sure how many of them made it to South Bend on Friday. Uh, not too many went to South Bend, but I think my mom handed out at least 60 tickets, I think, to family members and friends. So it was, it was a lot of people there. Yeah. Did they tailgate beforehand, stop for a deep dish pizza? What did they do to celebrate or actually get ready for the game on Sunday? Yeah, I think they actually had a gospel brunch in the morning, and then they, had, uh, they went to some bar beforehand. But yeah, there was a lot of tailgating, I'm sure. So Jim Cornelius is the longtime national anthem singer for the Chicago Blackhawks. You've seen him before in person. Uh, most people have seen him during NHL Stanley Cup playoff broadcast. And it's announced that he's going to sing the anthem. So as you're, did you know that that was going to happen? No, I wasn't sure that was going to happen. But once I found out, it was pretty cool. Because he's, he's, he's fun to listen to. And I think that's it's a, it's very uh, unique for the United Center to, for everyone to be so loud and for him to sing as good as he does. You're standing at the blue line and you know you're going to play because this guy's singing. He's yeah. setting the stage for you. you yeah, know? it was incredible. I, goosebumps right away. I think me and Wagner are right next to each other. We looked at each other and started smiling. It was, it was so incredible, but yeah, it was really cool. When did you know that your team was going to play as well as it played on Sunday? Um, I don't know. I think we felt really good Friday in South Bend. I think we, we played really well. It's, a couple things didn't go our way, but I think we were ready to go Sunday. Everybody wanted to get out there and there was so much energy in the locker room on the bench that you could tell that when they drop the puck, we were ready to go. Yeah. So maybe someday again you'll get to play at the United Center. Be nice, maybe in a Blackhawk sweater in the National Hockey League someday. But as you're leaving the rink, did you, you know, did you take a little scoop of, of the ice with you? <laughs> did you, you know, maybe steal something from the locker room? Did you take anything back with you as a momentum, uh, memento at all, Seamus? No, I think those three points against Notre Dame was enough for me. <laughs> Do you want to know how to avoid the return line this year? Just ask for gifts you won't want to return. Well, I'm not going to need this receipt. <laughs> Ring in the new year at your Buick dealer. Experience the new Buick and get 18% below MSRP on almost every remaining 2017 Envision model. That's over 7,500 on this Buick Envision Essence. Most people don't know that UW Health and the University of Wisconsin are national leaders in the field of kidney transplant. They provide new life for those who will likely die without a transplant. And they assure normal life for those who donate. I would know I donated a kidney and together we saved a life. UW Health, remarkable. Well, Wisconsin's back at the Kohl Center this weekend to take on the Penn State Nittany Lions, who've lost three in a row after an 11-game unbeaten streak. Still one of the highest-scoring teams in the country. They've given the Badgers some fits recently, but uh, if your team plays any way like it did this past weekend against Notre Dame, I like your chances. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think the way we played against Notre Dame all four games, if we play that way, play as a group of five, as a group of 20, we'll have a pretty good opportunity. But I, I like our chances, even the way we played uh, Penn State that Saturday uh, at their place. We, we competed. And if we go out and compete and, and work, um, that those those things you can control. Uh, you can't control some of the other things. But, you know, they're a tough team to play. Their transi transition game is outstanding. They have some guys that do a pretty good job with patience with the puck. Um, but if we play as a group and, and like we did on Sunday, like you said, and, and play 
uh, unbelievably sound around the puck. And we were five guys around the puck most of the game. And, uh, you know, that's fun to watch. I think our guys sensed, you know, that that's headed to the right direction. Sure. Mark, thanks for your time. Good luck this weekend. All right, thanks, bro. I'm sure that's Badgers associate head coach Mark Osiki. Both games this weekend on the Badger Sports Network, the iHeart Radio app. Friday's game starts at 8 o'clock. It's on the Big Ten Network. Saturday's game is a 7 o'clock start. That's on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Also in partnership with UW Carbone Cancer Center, the Wisconsin hockey team will have the face-off against cancer event on Saturday night. It's a way to celebrate uh, the research that uh, doctors and researchers do trying to find a cure for cancer and also honor those that fight this dreaded disease or have lost against this dreaded disease. It'll be great to see Rob Andringa in the building here on Saturday night as well. We ask you to come out and support all those that are trying to find a cure for cancer. Face off against cancer Saturday night. For Marco Siki, I'm Brian Posick. Thanks for watching the Badger Hockey Digest.